What's up y'all? It is a great standard session tune called Castle Kelly. It's a little bit weird, or maybe I just played a little bit weird doing A, B, B. That's the way I've heard it probably the most common. It, it is occasionally played A, A, B, B. It's played A, B, A, B. There's lots of different ways to do it. I think A, B, B just sounds interesting, so that's kind of how I've been sticking with it since I learned it. Let's jump in with the basic melody nice and slow here, starting with that short A part. Now I will say that this, since this tune is in A minor, we're dealing with C naturals. Your C natural may differ from mine. I tend to do it this way. Sometimes I'll do it this way, sometimes I'll do it this way, just kind of depending on the situation. With a tune like this, since we're bouncing between A and C, I will stick with I'll do that kind of move there, and that's actually not a bad exercise, not to derail this uh, this lesson too much, but making that change and getting comfortable with that nice and clean, probably not a bad way to go. Back on topic now, here's the second section. Run that again, starts the same with the A to C thing. Section is a repeat. And the last section is almost identical as the second section we just did. Do that again. That's the whole A part. The B part, like I said, the way that I do it does repeat. Let's jump into there. It goes way up high to the high uh, A in this case, ultimately the high B. So make sure your high notes are good and strong. Do a big long walk down there. Run that again. Second section is very repetitive, just the ending is different. Do that whole bit again. Boy, that's shrill. Now, if that is making your ears ring, feel free to keep it below the octave. If you can do that and not lose focus, it might save your hearing a little bit. If it's easier just to keep it all in the same melodic line, so be it. Just keep in mind it's going to get a little shrill. Third section is a repeat of the first. And in the last section we'll carry back some of what we did in the A part. That sounds familiar. I'll, I'll do that again. I'm going to run the whole thing all the way through. Feel free to jump in if you want. I'm going to play A, B, B, because that's the way that I learned it. So here we go.
So that's the whole tune. Ornaments wise, you can do a lot of stuff with that A and the C natural. That's a regular phrase. So a lot of cuts, a lot of taps. You can use that C natural tap. So do something like that. I like those those short rolls on the on the A's because it's kind of a I don't know sort of a punchy sound. Accenting those big strong beats. So or you can slide into it that way too and then accent the second one. And then mirroring that on the G too. Quick short roll, nice and punchy on that one. Nothing really there except tongue to separate them. You could cut those if you wanted to. I think, think it's a nice balance with all the short rolls in the beginning. Now that triplet, that good, nice, solid rhythm triplet is, I think, a, a cool place to put that. Rather than... Just punches up that, that section a little bit. Landing on the A with another short roll. Nice and quick and punchy. Jumping up to the B part. I almost always will slide that. Um, if you land directly on it, it seems a bit too harsh and, and likely to crack. So sliding into it, I think, uh, gets you where you're going a little bit easier. And gives it a little bit of that lift and softens some of the shrillness that you get from that upper octave. Doing, I've done that little, um, that little fluttery kind of thing on the E. I've, I've demonstrated that a few times. Two quick grace notes there. Landing on the G, every time I come down to that G, I like to do a short roll there. To stop that, that kind of phrase and end that phrase. Sliding back up high. And then a triplet to get to get back up to the second octave again. That, that kind of rhythmic, punchy triplet, I, I like to use that a lot whenever I can. Um... As I go from B to A, that's one of those times where you kind of want to have a little bit of faith in your whistle to be able to cut that without worrying it, that it's going to break or not, not sound clean. Um, that's where the whistle helps a lot. Uh, so that be, I would consider that an optional one. Again, finishing that phrase there. Otherwise, I don't really do a whole lot kind of in that walk down. Yeah, really nothing there other than landing on that, that G with the short roll. Now you could do one of those triplets there. That's one of those that probably sounds better on other instruments than it does on the whistle. As you finish that phrase, rather than turning it around that way, you could do a little triplet here, E, F sharp, G. Uh, it just doesn't have the same rhythmic effect that that, that one does. Use that as you see fit. Same little cutty thing that we did before with that short roll. Landing the phrase on a short roll again. It just helps it to, to I don't know, stick the landing, I guess. That's what I think. Let me know what y'all think about this tune. I think it's a great one. It's one that hopefully will be a mainstream once sessions are a thing again. Uh, cool. See y'all in the next one. Cheers.